Hello! Welcome to 2018 and the first edition for the year of our Founders Live Influencer Series, Ask Me Anything. Today's topic is one that you, if you're not going to use it immediately, put it in your back pocket, come find it again, because sooner or later, you're going to have to have the chance to present to very senior executives. Today's topic is how to present to the C-suite. C for, of course, chief, chief executive, chief operating, chief financial, chief marketing, all the chief officers. It seems like the right place to start in a discussion like this is not what you're going to say and how you're going to say it, but how you're going to deal with the nerves of presenting to a very senior group of people. This applies if you're going to be talking at a board meeting or if you're going to be talking at an executive committee type meeting. Anytime you feel like you've been called on for your expertise, but it's with a group of people who are very senior to you, there's a few things you're going to want to keep in mind. The first is prepare. Make sure that whatever it is you're going to be presenting and discussing or facilitating, you know your stuff and you've had a chance to go over it a few times. Second, there are some tricks that you can use in order to reduce your nerves right before going in. In prior sessions like this influencer series, we've talked about holding power poses for a period of time before you go into a room and just making yourself feel bigger, taller, stronger, and just generally more pulled together. Believe it or not, standing like this or like this for a minute or two before you go into talk with the group in the C-suite, it's going to bring your nerves down. The other thing you can do is self-talk. Tell yourself how well it's going to go, how good you're going to be, and how calm you're going to be with it, and use the third person. So I wouldn't go in saying, I'm going to be great, this is going to be a cinch. I would go in talking to myself as if I were someone else, standing off to one side, as it were, observing myself. Brian's going to be great. He's got this. He's well prepared. And just the mental pivot of putting yourself into the position of looking at yourself and talking to yourself as if you were someone else actually has been shown to reduce tension, reduce stress, and bring you a little more calm as you prepare. Remember too, the cliche, these are just people. They do put on their pants one leg at a time. So you've got to go to some essential humanity. It's okay to come in and use a little bit of humor. It's okay to diffuse the situation in your way, but don't just go in and say, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. Thank them for their time. Get on with your business. Remember, you've been called to speak to this group because you know something that they need to know. They're looking for your expertise. So you're being welcomed into the room and you need to enter with the thought in mind that you are their guest. You also can think about turning this into more of a conversation than a presentation. Different situations will call for different approaches, but as much as I can when I'm speaking with a group of senior people, I try to make sure that I am raising issues that get conversation going. And in a moment, uh, at, the, at the end, we'll talk a little bit about one good way to do that. Some time back, I worked with a client who himself is relatively senior in his organization, and we were preparing a speech for him. And the audience was going to be a group of people relatively early in their career in a very technical analytical field. And he wanted to make sure that these folks, when they had the chance to speak to executives on the business side with their technical issues, that they knew what would resonate with a senior group of business people. There were four things. We called them four that score in the C-suite. And these are the things that are on every senior executive's mind. They're the things that you should think about using as a hook 
in order to get your point across and in order to put your point into the right context. Whatever it is you're trying to promote as an idea, whatever sale you're trying to make internally or to this group, you need to think about tying it back to the things senior executives care about. And they're these four. Revenue and market share. What's happening at my top line? Am I gaining money? Or am I gaining market share and taking it away from competitors? On the other side of that equation is efficiency and costs. I may or may not make more money from this approach, but am I saving money? Am I making something happen faster, cheaper? Am I making something happen in a way that is replicable and I'm bringing some predictability and consistency to my business? Am I dragging more through to the bottom line, regardless of what happens to the top line? Executives care about customer loyalty. You're nothing without your customers or clients. If you've got an idea that you're pitching that is going to help executives know that they are going to turn prospects into customers, turn customers into advocates, turn advocates into fans, you've got your story. And if you put it into that context, you're going to be successful pitching in the C-suite. The last thing that, that executives are going to care about as a topic you can use as a hook is talent and capability. It costs a lot of money to recruit people, it costs money to train people, and it takes time for people to become effective at the job you've hired them to do. So anything that increases the desirability of the company to prospect, prospective employees or current employees, anything that makes people feel closer to the organization, makes them feel empowered, makes them feel like they've got a community and they care about its mission, that's a good hook for putting all of this to. And last, what do they care about? They care about proving it. So make sure whatever you pitch, revenue and market share, efficiency and costs, customer loyalty, or talent and capability, that you've got a way to measure it. That's the benchmarks there at the bottom of the graphic. Make sure you can show what you're going to do and what the effect is. Now here's some tips for once you get into the room. One, before you get there, you will have practiced. You will have gone through this, you will have thought of the questions they can ask, and you will have thought of questions that you can ask in order to stimulate conversation and maybe fill in some of the blanks of your own knowledge. Make sure you go in with a point of view. You're being paid and you're in that room because you have expertise. You will have studied this issue before you take it into the C-suite. You're going, they're going to want to know that you not only have thought this through, but that you have a course of action to recommend. And that leads to make sure you've got an ask, make sure that you don't present, share your thoughts, give a recommendation, and then walk out. It might work just fine, but how much better if you've got the opportunity to ask for a specific outcome and a specific decision to be made, or you can at least run them through a timeline for making a decision and let them know why it's important to stick to that timeline. Have and ask. One gotcha you're gonna to wanna to look out for. At Microsoft, we used to call this welcome to math camp. Look out for the executive. Better know who that executive is, who's going to find the, the appendix slide that has the spreadsheet on it and is going to ask you about the number in cell AB 427 and why exactly it says 3 million and not some other number. Know your stuff. Make sure that as you've built your argument, you really understand each piece. And if you're in the fortunate position of having a team where the team has done the homework and you're the mouthpiece, don't just be the mouthpiece. Make sure to put your team through its paces so that you understand all that you are relaying to these senior execs. Because senior execs, not only will they want to dig deep to satisfy their own curiosity, sometimes they just dig deep to make sure you know what you're talking about. It's a way of testing that they can trust you. Now as a bonus, 
I promised you a couple of good questions to start setting the tone and start engaging others in the conversation. My favorite question when I either get a question that I can't directly answer or when I just want to test the room and see if we can get other ideas going starts off with how might we? It brings inclusiveness to the conversation. It puts you on a footing with the people that you're presenting to. It makes them understand that you want to be part of the solution and that you feel inclusive within the organization. And this applies, by the way, whether you are part of the organization or whether you're coming in from the outside and just want to be adopted by it, like you're selling to them perhaps. How might we? Well, I see that we've got a problem here and I need your help in figuring it out. And you and they say that to you and you don't know exactly the right answer. It becomes a, well, you've seen a lot of this. I have a few ideas. Maybe I'll share one or two with you, but then let's brainstorm it. How might we go about solving that problem? How might we reduce that cost a little bit further? How might we get more for our advertising dollar? How might we close the books a little sooner at the end of each quarter? How might we attract, train, and retain talent a little bit better? And it doesn't so much make it their problem because it's their problem to begin with, but it makes it a group problem, something ripe for the solving. So that's it, a little prepare, Talk to yourself in the third person and take a power pose. Make sure you remember that senior people are just like junior people, except they've been around a little bit longer and maybe have a little more going on upstairs because they've been steeped in it for so long. But you're there because you know something that they still need to know. If you've got questions to stimulate conversation, if you're ready to go to math camp with them, if you show that you have a point of view and a recommendation, and if you remember to ask them for what they want, for what you want, you're going to do great. Go get them. And if you're watching this live, we'll see you in a few minutes over in the chat room. Thanks.